All right, so now moving on to item 22, the Marshland Road proposed signalised intersection. So did staff have any comments that you wanted to make on this one? Just to uh, make you all aware that this, uh, this project is to, um, has been through the full consenting process and this report is to um, present to you the outcomes of that consenting process. So if we were not to pass this today, what would the effect of that be, given that it's already gone through that process? Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head, but effectively it's already been consented, so it would have to go back to the consenting team to, to relook at the consent application. That's so if if we were not to pass this today, presumably the consent to do this remains in place, but the permission to do it is, is not? Like the decision to do it is not there? That would be my assumption, yes. So the work wouldn't at that point go ahead? No. Correct. Thank you. It's useful to know. Are there any further questions on this? Yanni. I think we need to get some legal advice. It's increasingly concerning that we're getting consenting decisions that bind us to do certain things through non-Local Government Act processes. Uh, we've got another one of crossing in Wilson's Road. Us. All right, that goes back so, to the question I just asked. It doesn't bind us, does it? We could make a decision not to do this and it wouldn't happen. So that's my understanding, yes, but I think we probably should seek some legal advice to clarify that. Yeah, I think, I think you do need to take advice, legal advice around this, um, but it just seems to me inherently bizarre that someone could get a consent and then require us to do something that either the community doesn't want or the traffic network yep. can't cope with. So what we're saying is we actually need that legal advice before we can effectively consider this matter. If I could, if I could just say something, that um, independent assessment has been done of the area and uh, which included traffic modelling and um, the effects of the network are considered to be less than minor. So traffic operations have got no reason to doubt that assessment, independent assessment, so, um, or, or disagree with it. So the, the modelling has said the network will handle the extra signal. Right, okay. All right, well, let's proceed on that basis. Um, and I mean, it may well be that if we got to a position where we voted not to do this, then the implementation of that would need to be subject to legal advice as to what would occur. Um, Hub's just crashed. It may be in the report. But are we funding this, or is the development funding? They're fully funding, funding it. Yep. There's... Okay. Um, Okay, further questions, Mike. Thank you, just a quick question on the intersection layout. And there's um, a giveaway coming out of the um, development. I'm just wondering if we've got the ability to change that to a stop sign. I'm just um, uncomfortable with mm. these um, free turns with just a giveaway with a, a cycle lane yeah. going past it. So, so one of the things the developer has agreed to is to actually put in all the required infrastructure below ground to avoid any excavation in the future, so that if it was decided it was unsafe, that we could signalise that access completely. Okay. But in, in the interim, and once yeah. they decide it's unsafe because someone gets hurt, um, could we therefore have a stop instead of the give way? Uh, we potentially could. What, what I would say is that um, once it's constructed, the post-construction safety audit would be undertaken, which would happen almost immediately being after it's being constructed and that would give us guidance on that control. Yeah, I, I'm just a bit concerned because actually I this week got knocked off my bike by a car in this exact same yeah. situation. Um, so there's a risk there and I think if we've got the opportunity to address it before we actually put anything in place, yeah. we should. And uh, you know, I like that's future proofed but I think the starting point should be a stop instead of a, a give way. Um, Oh, that's a, it's a valid, valid point. I think um, to do the design justice, it's been designed to what would be current standards or recommendations. Whether it's a stop or a give way is normally based on your visibility requirements. 
and at the moment it's meeting all the requirements for a giveaway control. But but as you're saying, there may be other factors that may warrant a stop. But um, that that would I would hope be addressed quite quickly through the post construction audit. But would you need a would you need another resolution to write another report after the thing to change it to a stop sign? You would do yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So if we just did it now. Um, yeah. All right. So Mike, your that's your question asked and answered. Yes, it's answered. But I will not be able to support this until um, it's changed to actually make sure that it starts with a with a stop. So maybe we can put the question to staff slightly differently. If an amendment to this were moved to put that stop sign in place, would that be capable of being implemented? It would be yes. So we could. Okay. Do that. So we could consider that amendment if indeed you wanted to put it. Okay, Tim. Um, that's exactly what I was going to do with the permission. I thought that Mike might want to be do actually doing that, passing it, or making an amendment to make that a stop sign. But I'm, I'm kind of confused in the in the process. So, you know, like the developer. I mean, why is it actually if the developer has the right to do this and it goes through the process, what is it actually coming here to do apart from finding something that it, we I think can improve the safety? Because we have permission to say yay or nay, but but. I think that comes back to the question of legal advice, because uh, yeah, I'm a bit, a bit confused, but I, I, I'd leave it to Mike to make that amendment. I'd certainly support it or second it if required to turn that give way, left hand give way into a stop sign. Thank you. Okay, are there further questions on this? All right, so Mike, are you, do you want to put something by way of amendment to reflect the Yeah, I'm happy to put it as raised. amendment. Potentially it could just go into the resolution if whoever moves it. Well, happy. do you want to move it with the amendment incorporated? So amend it to what you... I'll move it. It's not the best solution, but I guess um, the traffic modelling shows that it's not going to have an impact. So I'll move it as long as we get that um, yeah. seventh one in there, which is to... Um, um, yeah, install a stop sign at the left turn, left turn exit of the development instead of um, <coughs> a good way. At the left hand exit of the development instead of a good way. Does that work? Yeah, left, yeah. Left, left, left slip lane. Left slip lane. Yeah. Instead, of instead of the good way. No, no, but Instead of the giveaway. Is that what you're saying? Mike, can you just repeat your wording again? Sorry. That's fine. That's fine? Yeah. Install a stop, a stop sign in the left hand slip lane of the development. Instead of the giveaway. Instead of the giveaway. Yeah. I'll just change it to stop control. Okay. Stop, stop control. control. Yeah. Yep. So, so All right. Control. So get rid of sign and put control instead. Install a stop control. Yep. Do you need a giveaway? In the left-hand slip lane of the development instead of the, the giveaway. giveaway. Control. So control. Yep. that's clear to to staff and, and yep. would be capable of being implemented. Yep. Yes. Fantastic. That's great. Tim, you've um, indicated you're happy to second that. Yep. All right. So we've got a mover and a seconder. Yanni. Ch have, have we had the traffic information peer reviewed or we just relied on the consenting traffic advice or on the impact on the road network? It would have been uh, peer reviewed through, uh, through staff. Right. And can you just explain how adding another set of traffic lights and all the delays, how that doesn't have an impact on the traffic? Um, yeah. so I'm just going to uh, invite Richard Hollander to... Uh, <laughs> Sorry, the, um, this has been fully um, through um, safety audits, um, and the, the the signals are linked from Briggs Road through to QE2 Drive. So, so that whole the whole corridor has been looked at um, and well modelled. All the work was peer reviewed by another consultant. Um, so, so the, all, all that work has been done. It all it all works well. All right, thank you. So further questions I've got. So Yanni, that was everything from you. So I've got so, Anne. Sorry, I just, I just want to be clear. So the lights are all synced together, which means there won't be any additional delays because when one light's green, the other light's green, so everyone moves through. They would be sequenced, yeah. Yeah, so that's from Briggs Road through to QE2 Drive. 
because of the, the other entrance to the to the develop, um, you know, that's outside the existing entrance. Home base, home base. Couldn't think of the name because there's because there's Briggs Road, home base, new signals, QE2. Okay. All right. Thank you. So I've got Anne, David, Glenn, and Pauline. Let's keep this moving. Yep. Anne. I, I I apologise if, if this is in the report and I've missed it, but I just wanted to know how often is this happening that you're getting a partnership with a developer to do something like this because it seems like a really good partnership agreement that's happened here. Is it something new? Uh, we're a developer. No, I mean, <laughs> no. Yes, yes, and no. <laughs> it's, just, it's the same as proper. It, it, yeah. it is a re often a requirement, right? Um, because they want a new entrance. Okay. Um, and often with new subdivisions, it's the same. The developer, developer pays all we cost share with the developer. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's it's nothing new. Pretty it's common. Just, it's pretty common. Yeah. Great. Thank, Thank you. you, David. Um, just for consistency, um, what is the uh, control on the slip lane out of home base? Do we have a giveaway there or a stop? Currently, so, it's a giveaway. Well. <laughs> To be consistent, we probably should either have giveaways on both of the slip lanes or stop on both of the slip lane the exits. It's a good point. There's no slip lane on the home base. One. Yes, there is. Yeah. Is there? Yeah. yeah. But there's a chance. Yeah. What I would say, just um, to, to sort of hopefully help some of the concerns raised, is that there will be a, a raised platform on that slip lane exiting the site as well. Yeah. So that should hopefully um, slow any vehicles on, on that exit down. Yeah. So it's a um, give way at home base? Yes. Give way, yeah. So why, why would we do a stop sign at one and a, and a give way at the other? Well, that's something we could um, could look at in the future. I would have thought there would have been a need for consistency. All right, thank you. One or the other. So Glenn and then Pauline. Glenn. Okay, thank you. The distance between the proposed signals and the existing is 150 metres. Uh, and I, I take note of the table, page 360, although there are other tables as well. We've got several intersection streets there uh, at a rating of C in terms of level of service. So this is obviously not going to add value, it's going to take it back. Um, I'll look at, and I'll declare I live in the street. The Lake Terrace Road turning doesn't have a dedicated arrow, so it adds another two seconds delay. I mean, you're saying this is not going to have an adverse effect? It will have a, a, a sort of, I'd say, less than minor effect. Less than minor? Yeah, it's not going to have any, any um, effect of any significance. The key thing with any signals is, is that you clear within a single cycle. Um, and that's the, the key that we're trying to aim for. And if it's receiving a level of service of C, you will be clearing in every cycle. You won't have to wait more than one cycle if you get in a level of service C. This is an interesting thing I've found before is that the quantitative data says one thing, but the qualitative, i.e. the residents' experience, is another. <laughs> so, you know, I've had several people asking, can we please do something about the timing, the phasing, etc. It's It's just not matching up. So I, I don't know, it doesn't make sense to have another set of lights 150 metres north. Effectively having another set of lights 150 metres north, all you're doing is, you, you, it's the same queue, you're, just, you're breaking that queue up effectively. Um, rather than having one long queue on, on the approach to one signals, you put in a new set of signals in the middle and you're breaking that queue up and it's going to be divided over <coughs> both sets. And that's why there's... in, in sort of theoretical term, there's not really going to be that much of an impact. It would only get worse if the traffic generation was to significantly increase. But again, the, um, this is a, a T intersection. Most, all of the delay along that strip is going to be at the, the crossroads further up, not at the T intersection. T intersections are always more efficient because you're only dividing your time by three approaches, mm. whereas at the crossroads you're dividing your your, your available signal time to four approaches. So there's always going to be more time at the T intersection for traffic to proceed through than there is at the upstream intersection. Thank if, you. If that makes sense. Yeah, that's really helpful actually to point that out, the T intersection as, as opposed to a full intersection. <coughs> My question is, which I've only thought of today, and I'm sorry I would have asked at the community board, is if, you, if a car is travelling south from QE2, 
um, we've already got the right turn lane going into home base. They would share, um, anyone going into home base or this new development would share that right turn lane, is that correct? And is there a, is there a likelihood that there could be back queuing there? No, that's that's not correct. Um, the, it's got its separate, its own right turn separate bay. Again. Yes. Right. And the other um, question I have is um, options. Were there any other options? Because that's what we haven't seen. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> that, that, that would have gone through the consent process, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid, so I don't know. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So no further questions. This has been moved and seconded. Is there any debate on this? Mike. There's um, a number eight in there, which I've um, <coughs> just emailed through. Yep. Um, actually, might need to put request staff at the front of it as well. And it's just to, to review it to try and get some consistency across and then report back to the community boards. If I can just add something to that, I mean, our long-term aim is to actually try and reduce the amount of slip lanes that we have anyway. Yeah. That's, 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 that's what we, we would aim for. Oh, that's good. Well, that leads it comes back to the community lanes. board Sorry. and we can yeah, have a conversation. Yeah. So they're retaining the one on Carlton Road, which is great. Um, Billy Ed and Carlton. They were going to take that one out. Do you have to Yep, okay, so Mike, um, that's all good. Tim, you're comfortable with that? Fantastic, okay, so let's proceed on that basis. Is there any debate on this? Yanni. I mean, my preference is to get legal advice around this. I, I think we've got a, a huge issue with the way in which things get consented on a case-by-case -case basis, but the key, the cumulative effects um, are massive. And, you know, we've got similar issues along um, Ferry Road through Ferry Maid where actually intersections weren't put in, signalised intersections for places that generate a lot more, probably a lot more traffic than this. So I'm really struggling with the need to have a signalised um, intersection here. I, I personally would prefer to have the legal advice. Uh, I just think, you know, that we just, we, we've just gone mad with putting signalised crossings in all the time that has a huge impact on the network of, a, of our city in terms of efficient transportation around. And um, I, I won't support this today. I, I think this is a bizarre way of, of doing these things. Maybe our district planning needs to get a lot smarter around how we look at the wider impact across our network. But you know, for anyone that doesn't think this is going to add to journey times, go and have a look at the airport now. Look at the amount of time it now takes to get to the airport versus when it didn't have all those traffic lights so close together. It does have a huge impact. It adds up and it makes a real disruption to the efficient flow of transport. Thank you. Dion. Yeah, I, I share, share the same sentiment that Yanni does on these things, and, and again I'll, I'll drum in the uh, district plan and the Resource Management Act allowing um, more of these bigger developments like this happening on the fringes, fringes of the city, um, and, and I really do think that we need to address this um, and I do have concerns that we get forced down a, a path that is, you know, we have to make a decision. And if we don't make the decision, then the development can't go ahead because it's probably its resource management condition um, to have this installed this way. And I really don't, I, don't, I just don't like that. Um, I think as well, we, we're picking up the maintenance and all of those kind of aspects of these as well. So we get forced to make the decision for the developer and then we're lumped with the traffic lights and have to sort of pay the maintenance and everything like that as a city. And I do think there could have been a better design of the um, of the actual development, and but that's not for me to make a judgment call on. But I really don't like being forced down these decisions that we have to make. All right, thank you. Glenn. Thank you. Uh, I live nearby. I know this intersection, uh, rather the existing uh, Briggs, uh, Lake Terrace, Martian Road intersection and the home base intersections very well. Use them all the time. Uh, I respect uh, the staff data collection and what they have to do. But to me, this is a case, another case of a disconnect between a plan and the actual lived experiences of the residents where uh, people are already crashing through red lights as if they're orange and we have considerable build-up at peak hour uh, with uh, cars stranded across uh, the intersection lower down. I cannot see how the phasing will actually add value to that. Uh, it's 150 metres 
uh, north of the existing lights. I also think we need to pick up on Yanni's point, sort out something over the hierarchy of decision making. So we've got a resource consent over here. Now we've got a matter for the council to, deserve, uh, to consider over here. It's kind of like a fait accompli uh, truck and trailer effect, and it, it's not sitting comfortably with me, so I'm, I'm not going to support this today. Thank you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Against? No. If you can, so um, Pauline, so those that are against, if you can just raise your hands, please. So James, Pauline, um, Dion, Glenn and Yanni. So that is carried.